piece is really about is really a question of how much uh, how much attention are you willing to give to the world, which I think is always uh, is always the question the artist is asking of the rest of society: Will you look? Will you see? Will you hear? And uh, it seems to me that uh, Jerry had reached a place where he felt uh, he he actually wasn't uh, paying attention in as full a way. Uh, as he could himself, and so he stepped off uh, into uh, that sweet darkness and that sweet uh, unknown, which to most of us is actually quite terrifying, and made a friendship with the eye of that darkness, and was able to see a reflection of himself eventually that was much larger than the person who was looking out at the world to begin with. When your eyes are tired, the world is tired also. When your vision has gone, no part of the world can find you. It's time to go into the dark where the night has eyes to recognize its own. There you can be sure you are not beyond love. There you can be sure you are not beyond love. The dark will be your home tonight. The night will give you a horizon further than you can see. You must learn one thing. You must learn one thing. The world was made to be free in. Give up all the other worlds except the one to which you belong. Give up all the other worlds. Give up all the other worlds except the one to which you belong. Sometimes it takes darkness and the sweet confinement of your aloneness to learn, to learn that anything or anyone that does not bring you alive is too small for you. I always feel these last lines cut both ways. You know, anything or anyone that does not bring you alive is too small for you. Because sometimes even your nearest and dearest, your loved ones, cannot bring you alive. And then you have to ask yourself, you know, how am I looking at them? How am I seeing them so that I've made them too small for me? What is it, in, uh, what is it that is diminished about my own powers of attention that's actually making the world too small for myself? I think one of the great disciplines of existence, especially as we grow older, is one of the is the discipline of innocence uh, and of keeping uh, the sense of wonder and enlargement and surprise alive in your own heart. And the moment that you stop, uh, in a sense, living from your innocence, is the moment where you start to feel besieged by existence. And, as, and the moment you need defenses and walls, and no matter how high you build those walls, you know, the encroaching sea of existence will actually scour them away. And uh, you somehow be revealed. Um, but because you've lived in exile from what is innocent and real about yourself, what frightens you most in life is your own happiness. And I think one of the great difficulties in life is claiming your own happiness. And I think Jerry is actually one of the few people I know who in a very quiet way has actually claimed his happiness and existence. There's a very wise close friend of mine who says that the reason that you won't claim your happiness in life is that if you did, then immediately enormous parts of you would be out of a job and they'd have to go somewhere else and be retrained. You know. Because when you start to look at the way that your own personality is configured, uh, you find that there are large parts of it which are actually afraid of the innocence of your own first-hand contentment and happiness. And the actual grasping of the hand of your own contentment is like grasping the hand of death, actually. Because the whole outer um, form of yourself would be shattered. And this innocent part, which actually may be a stranger to you, would be, uh, would be left there. And it's one of the great and awful kind of uh, difficulties that um, people find in their middle age um, as they start, as they, they've had many years of kind of logistical and strategic involvement with the world, and they become strangers to their own innocent viewing of creation. 
so that they can no longer see clouds, stars, woods, fields, even their own child's face, without feeling they have to do something willful about it in order to belong, in order to feel they deserve some kind of participation. And I think one of the most magnificent, magnificent I, think, I think one of the most magnificent things about Jerry's life is its, uh, its profound and courageous uh, innocence. Uh, in that he has, he has created a tremendous friendship with a part of himself which is, um, is in love with the world. And his artistry actually, uh, actually displays that. And the fact that his artistry is not packaged and is on every uh, living wall of his room, uh, of his house and garden, and uh, that it fills uh, his and Marilyn's life in such a profound way is, is really a marvelous indication of where he, he's come. And in a way, it's the, it's the journey of the artist full circle in the Western tradition, you know, from our original uh, inheritances where art was simply a kind of celebratory um, component of everything we did, um, through to its discreet hiving off from everyday life and then back again now, you know, into, a, into a, a more integrated experience. I think one of, the, um, one of the things that we're desperate for now in the postmodern world is a first-hand experience of creation. And we're tired of talking about the world, and we're tired of observing the world through uh, various media, and we want to be actually uh, present to it and affected by it in a very innocent way.